So what I'm going to talk about today is the trigger. Uh, I assembled it and of course the uh, trigger was uh, absolutely terrible. Uh, I could feel it was really gritty. Uh, when I pulled the trigger it was a long travel and then it would release and I could just feel like I was uh, had a piece of chalk and was riding on the sidewalk with it. I could just actually feel that that grit in there. So I'm going to tell you what I did and what I've observed in, uh, in this process. So what I've done here is I have removed the hammer and the trigger and then I took the springs off the hammer and the trigger and I put a punch through here to hold the hammer and then I just used the pin. I just pushed it out to uh, hold the trigger and in this way I can demonstrate the contact points and what's going on and then I'll talk about the springs later. All right, I'm all zoomed in here. We have the uh, hammer, we have the trigger, and we have the disconnector. So when you're feeling that gritty feeling when you're pulling the trigger, what's going on is, uh, let me get that in the center, you're traveling down to disengage, and that travel down is where all your roughness is. That's where you're feeling the sandpaper effect and the grit. And you've got all that travel distance to go before it disengages and the hammer falls, rotates around and strikes the uh, firing pin. So the whole time you're pulling this guy down is your gritty, horrible feeling. And then of course you have this powerful spring on there, which I measured at nine pounds. <laughs> uh, is pressing up against there so the rougher those two surfaces are the grittier your feel is going to be and the harder your trigger is going to be but once that clearance is made uh, and it's disengaged then it's all the uh, hammer spring throwing up against the bolt so what I was going to do is I was going to clean up the contact area. I was going to polish it. Now I've polished handgun triggers since 1984. Yes, I'm that old. And so I thought, well, I'd give this a go too. I was going to polish it up, which meant I was going to take off all the high spots. And you can see the contact point on this side. And you'll notice that this side is angled. And I was going to clean up this area here too and you can see that shine where the contact point is. Now I'm only going to polish this. I'm not going to remove material. Actually polishing is removing material but the point is to uh, clean it up and make it smooth as opposed to uh, machining it down. So what I chose to do was I just took one of my Japanese whetstones. Uh, just This is a 1200. You could use uh, Arkansas hard or medium. Uh, you could even use a uh, file if you wanted to. Um, that would be reasonable. I'd hold that on the table and work the part. Uh, now the idea is just to remove all the high spots and polish it. So you can just uh, polish it up, get it all nice and smooth, get all those ridges out uh, from the cutting operation. And so I still wanted to keep that that um, sharp edge on there that uh, well it's not a 90 <laughs> it might even be a 60 I haven't measured it I, I have no idea but I wanted to keep that edge on there I didn't want to round it just yet I just wanted to do one thing at a time to uh, see how it works uh, on the range uh, to see if I like it now for the other angle if you have knife sharpening experiences it's you know just find the edge uh, and then just work the edge and, and as you know working by hand is a lot better than by a machine uh, I wouldn't use a Dremel or anything like that I'm gonna have to take some still shots and incorporate them into this video but the hammer is a different beast altogether what's going on here is there's not enough uh, clearance for you to get a whetstone in there it's just too large to get to be effective on the edge that you want to uh, bring down, uh, smooth up, polish that is. Uh, so I just happen to have a 
points file. This is something left over from the late 70s, early 80s. Yes, again, I'm that old. Uh, my points file was able to fit into the slot uh, with some play and just uh, just kind of went back and forth real light just like I'm showing you here no pressure on it whatsoever just back and forth and I'll, I'll take a picture of this and uh, the whole idea is just to get the machining marks off of it to smooth it up uh, just get it really nice so that the trigger when it rides on that metal to metal surface it's it's really smooth and and the interface is not gritty so what to do um, I did see a video on YouTube where someone bent the spring right here and made it parallel with the hammer. Uh, that was a good idea. You're taking some of the pressure off of it. You still need enough force on the spring to fire the primer. So I did that and it only took about a pound off. It would release at seven and a half, eight or so. So I want to take even more off of there. So what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wind this tighter. I'm going to bring this whole thing around, and I am just going to uh, put this in a vise. And I have a spring winding tool. It's just really nothing more than like a punch, and you're just wrapping around it. And so I'm just, I'm going to bring this guy down uh, a little bit more, and. Uh, Probably bring, bring it around to just above the trigger engagement and I'll see how that goes I'll, I'll need to do a range test to find out if that works and and I'll put that video on to let you know my mods because I might go back to a stock spring uh, I definitely don't see myself with uh, $200 on a trigger anytime soon all right I have my trigger gauge all set up the tape is at the nine pound mark such that this is nine pounds right here it's where it was tripping at before sometimes it tripped at eight sometimes at nine zoom in here a little bit for you and let's see where we're at And we tripped it five pounds. Try it again. And we tripped at four and a half. So now I've reduced it to four and a half, five pounds. That's good. I didn't want to go over, I didn't want to go under four pounds. I didn't want to approach three. Because I'd like enough force onto the trigger itself. I mean, uh, excuse me, the hammer uh, to strike the firing pin and ignite the primer. Uh, 